Um, a lot of people on YouTube were asking me how I learned electronics. And because one thing I didn't realize is when you know something really well, you kind of just assume that everyone else knows it, you know? Like things that I learned, I just assumed that everyone else in the world had learned them too. I didn't realize that sometimes people are just learning things for the first time. There's quite a long story, actually, on how I got into electronics. I would say the story of how I got into electronics probably started when I was in fourth grade, probably. So in fourth grade, I've mentioned this a lot, but at this time, my dad, he owned a secondhand video game store. So my dad, he owned a video game store. It was pretty close to where we live, so we could walk to his store. And we also had Tamagotchis. <laughs> I always bring up the Tamagotchi, and that's because I guess the Tamagotchi was the first time where I really like saw circuits within like an electronic, within um, some electronic, if that makes sense. So me and my sister were getting so annoyed with our Tamagotchis, we decided that we were gonna, <laughs> we were gonna kill our Tamagotchis. Me and my sister, we had this planned out. We we're like, okay, our Tamagotchis are annoying. They cry at three in the morning. They're too hard to take care of. They keep dying. We're just gonna kill it. And we didn't know how to kill it. We didn't think about taking out the batteries. <laughs> so instead, we decided that we'd put our Tamagotchis behind my mom's car. And then in the morning when my mom went to work, she would back up. She would run over the Tamagotchis, um, thus smashing the electronic and killing it. That was the plan. So we did that. My mom runs over the Tamagotchi. I go out there the next day. I look at the evidence. And then I see, like, the Tamagotchi. There's the plastic just crumbled, and then I see the circuit inside. And then I was like, that's all it is? That's that's all a Tamagotchi is? It's like in my little fourth grader mind, I thought it was magic. But then when I saw what a Tamagotchi actually is, I realized it's um it's just a circuit board. A teeny little circuit board. And so Later on in life, a little later, my stepdad at his secondhand video game store, they started modding Xboxes. So modding Xboxes, I believe it's illegal. Shouldn't do it. <laughs> but um, uh, the person at my, at my dad's store that was helping my dad, or actually not helping, because my dad didn't learn how to mod the Xboxes, but he would mod the Xboxes for my dad. Um, that guy, he's a family friend, he was teaching me how to mod Xboxes. And once I realized it's actually quite easy um, to mod an Xbox, I thought that was really cool. I thought the modding Xboxes were was the coolest thing ever, the 360s. Um, and then I had a, and then I got my iPod Touch. So back in the day they had iPod Touches. I got an iPod Touch and I decided to jailbreak it. <laughs> Man, I'm doing all this illegal stuff as a kid. Oh my gosh. Um, so I think those events kind of got me into electronics where I realized electronics aren't very scary. They're just circuits. It's just a circuit board. Um, usually it's repairable or fixable. Um, modding Xbox is pretty cool. I have a few books I can recommend. Uh, okay, so one thing about me, like I said, I might be a crazy person because I don't know what kind of person uh, like moves to a foreign country on the other side of the world or what kind of person gets their face lasered off every single month for three plus years or what kind of person i don't know i i might be a crazy person anyways that being said i really love to read textbooks <laughs> i cannot read like fictional books i do i don't know why but i have i struggle really badly with reading fictional books but I love reading textbooks, so I have a lot of textbooks. Got them. Oof. So, some of these books are a little old. Um, all right, let's see here. So, I don't know if I mentioned this. Growing up in high school, chemistry was my favorite subject. I absolutely love chemistry. Uh, so this book is my favorite. This is electrochemistry. 
So when I was first learning electronics, it is really confusing because it doesn't make any sense at all. I say that because learning electronics feels like it's magic because if you know anything about chemistry, when you start learning electronics, you're like, okay, how does this relate to chemistry? It doesn't make sense in my brain. It's not clicking. This book makes everything click together. It talks about why they do stuff the way they do within electronics. Um, and the reason why they do it is because they actually knew that we had electronics before we even knew about the electron. And so our math within, our math within electronics is it's backwards and it doesn't make sense. It's really frustrating and confusing. This book clears all of this up. If you like any sort of chemistry at all and you get into electronics, definitely read this book. It helped me a lot to understand why electronics is weird. So electrochemistry. This book's amazing. This book is the only book you'll ever need for electronics. This bad boy is filled with all of the math. It breaks it down and makes it so simple. Um, it explains everything. This book is the only book you'll ever need for electronic circuits. It's incredible. It's because uh, I was learning electronics, but electronics is frustrating uh, because like I said, we, uh, we learned, uh, we discovered electron electricity before we discovered the electrons. So a lot of the math in electronics is very confusing because they thought that electricity flowed from the positive to the negative, right? So in classic electronics, they always say like the flow, the current goes from positive to negative. However, the electrons, so positive, the, there's no such thing as like positivity. Um, so what makes a, what makes, <clears throat> sorry. What makes an atom positive is the lack of electrons, right? So the electrons actually jump from the negative to the positive side. So elect electrons move from the negative to the positive. Uh, but they didn't know that back then. They always thought it went from positive to negative. We didn't discover that electrons move from the negative to the positive until after we discovered. Um, or we didn't, yeah, we didn't discover that until like way after when we discovered the electron and everything and did a bunch of, can't remember, there was one discovery that the guy found out that he realized, can't remember his name at the moment. I'll have to find it later. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, because basically what's happening within electronics is you have negatively charged particles, right? And those particles, the electrons are jumping from them from one like particle to the other and they're going to the positive side that jump of the electron going from one like particle or one atom to another is causing like the electrical current is causing electricity if that makes sense so like that's kind of what's happening on like a very molecular scale anyways back to the books this one i liked because it's more analog um this book talks about digital design so originally I got this book thinking it would tell me more of how to do circuits. It actually doesn't really tell you much about circuits and talks more about the programming of a, like a, a complete circuit. This book is still full of incredible information and really nice. And it talks more about, actually more about programming um, than it does about creating analog circuits if that makes sense so i was more interested in creating my own analog circuits so that one talks about like if you were to have like for example a chip that you wanted to program it talks more about that this one will talk more about your analog stuff <laughs> why do they move towards the positive side ah okay so why do electrons move towards the positive side so there's a force basically uh so when one particle has more electrons and this one is lacking in electrons the lack of electrons will make it positive so there's kind of this natural force where we kind of want like equilibrium for the most part 
So basically this negatively charged electron, or sorry, this negatively charged particle has too many electrons. This one is lacking electrons. So the electrons will naturally want to be pulled to this, um, to this particle over here. Uh, to be honest, none of these books talk about that. The only book that talks about that is the electrochemistry. The only one that talks about that is this. Do protons also move towards the negative side? No, protons will never move. Protons and neutrons are within the atom. You have your protons and your neutrons in the center. Those um, protons are what's going to determine what element that it is. If a decay happens, so like when you hear of like nuclear decay, if a decay happens, which, hap which will make the protons kind of like fall off of the nuclei, um, that nuclear decay will turn it into a different element entirely. So when it loses a proton, it's not, it's no longer the same element, it's changed. It's become a different element entirely. If an element loses a proton, you're in big trouble. That is not good. 